Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Newton's Third Law of Motion, and this is part one. So this is truly one of the most misunderstood laws in all of physics. Most people have heard of this. It's the one involving action and reaction uh, forces. And most people probably feel like they understand it, but actually there's a, a couple of little things you have to really pay attention to. Uh, otherwise you don't understand what this law is saying at all. So what we have to do is understand it uh, write it down, draw lots of pictures, and really uh, understand in our bones what it's telling us so that we can solve our problems. So the first thing you have to understand is we have to analyze a little more deeply what a force is anyway. And you have to recognize in the beginning, and this is something that's not really like brought into focus until a little later in physics, but we have to recognize that anytime you have a force, any force you can think of, it's always some sort of interaction between two objects. I challenge you to think and try to come up with a force that doesn't involve two objects, right? And you won't be able to do it because anytime we have a force, by definition, there always has to be two objects interacting with each other. Let me give you some examples. The Earth uh, interacts gravitationally and pulls on the moon, but the moon has gravity also and it interacts and pulls on the Earth. So you see, there's two objects involved in, in the forces that are going on there. When I push on this board, my hand is in contact with the board, I'm pushing on the board, but you see there's another body involved, the board itself, there's two bodies involved anytime there's a force. If I have a rope and I pull on a you know rope tied to a car or something, I'm pulling on the rope, but you see uh, the rope is attached to my hand. There's always two objects anytime there's a force. Even electric and magnetic forces, where you have a, a, an electron and over here and a proton here and they're attracting each other, you see what's going on? There's two bodies. Anytime there's an attractive force or a repulsion force, there's always two bodies. So I challenge you, again, to try to think of any situation where there's forces going on and try to find one where there's, there's only one body. You won't be able to do it. If I flap my arms, you know, like this, well, one of the bodies is my hand and the other object is the air surrounding my hand. So the reason I'm setting the lesson up like this is because I want you to have it in your mind that any time you interact with a force or that you can imagine a force, it always involves two bodies, always. So then when you recognize that, then you understand a little bit more why Newton's law of motion, third law of motion, makes sense. So I'm gonna say it out loud and then we're gonna, I'm gonna draw a lot of examples on the board. I'm also gonna write it on the board because this one's important enough we need to write it. And Newton's third law basically says the following, to every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Sounds simple, right? But why is there an equal and opposite reaction force? The main reason is because anytime you have a force, there's always two bodies involved. So you can't just have a one-sided force acting because there's always two bodies interacting. There's always some gonna be some force reacting backwards in the backwards direction on the other body. That is why Newton's law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction because for every force you can imagine, and I just gave you five examples, there's always two bodies. So that's the fundamental reason. And the other thing I'll say out loud, we, all, we will also write it on the board, is that these two forces, they occur in pairs, action and reaction, they never act on the same body. They always act on the two bodies that are that are present in the interaction. So for instance, my hand pushes on the board. That is a force from my hand into the board. But the board pushes back into my hand and that force acts on my hand. So you see the first force is me acting on the board and the other reaction force is the board pushing into my hand. Both of those forces, they act on different objects. The first force acts on the board and the reaction force acts on my hand. They do not act on the same body. If you think you have an action-reaction uh, pair that acts on the same body, you're wrong because it can't by definition. These forces, the action and the reaction forces, they always happen between pair of objects that are interacting and they always act on different bodies. So let's draw some pictures and get a lot of examples and then I'll write Newton's third law on the board uh, out as well and so that you can by the end of this understand exactly what's going on. So here you get to experience my drawing skills because here I'm gonna draw a ball, right? So here we go, ball, like this. And then I'm going to draw a foot kicking this ball and I'm a terrible artist, you all know this. So here is a foot, something like this. And it's kicking the ball. So it's not just sitting here. It's like wham, it hits the ball like this. So what happens at the instant of time that we're interested in? Well, what happens is there is a force to so just forget about the foot. The foot kicks it, but just forget about it. 
there is a force that it acts on this ball. It goes this way. And you could call it F, but to talk about more specifically what's happening, this is the foot acting on the ball. And that's because I've drawn the arrow from the ball. Now, of course, the force comes from my foot, but ultimately it's impacting this thing and the force that's acting on this thing is in this direction and it's because of my foot acting on the ball. Now, what Newton's third law is saying is that as a, at the moment of contact, you see, as we've said from many, many examples, there's always two bodies interacting between when there's a, a force. You cannot come up with a situation where there's a force happening and only one body. You can't have just like a force acting on itself. It never happens. So in this case, the two bodies are the foot and the ball. So when I kick the ball, I impart a force from the foot onto the ball. But at that moment of contact, then there is also a reaction force that is a force, I'll call it capital F, I'll put my little vectors on top here, which is the ball acting on the foot. This is an action-reaction pair, all right? Now, the first thing you're probably thinking is, well, I've never felt a ball kick my foot. That isn't real, but think about it for a second. Just imagine a little soccer ball that gives a little bit. And when you give it a nice swift kick, you probably have felt the compression of that ball. And if you kick it at just the right, you probably, you can't see my feet here. So just imagine this is my foot. As it kicks the ball, I'm sure you've had that situation where your foot has rebounded off of the ball. That is the force of that ball kick, kind of kicking your foot back. You have a microscopic um, compression of that ball, which deforms the ball. And that increases the pressure in the ball. And when it springs back, it pushes right back onto your foot. So if you kick it at just the right moment, you can feel it kind of kick your foot back. So the ball moves in its direction and the foot moves backwards in its direction. Because I've imparted a force on the ball, the ball moves that way. And the, the force back onto my foot makes my foot kind of rebound that way. You can think of those little balls, tick, 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 those little things that do this, right? Sort of kind of the same thing. Uh, or you can imagine holding one still and it like bounces uh, off like this. So it's the same sort of thing. The reaction force is present because there's always two objects interacting with a force. Now the important thing that I said verbally that we're gonna write down also is that action-reaction pairs of forces, they never cancel. You can never just cancel. It's easy to think that, oh, this one is in this direction and this one is in this direction. They're gonna cancel because they're equal and opposite. So there's nothing happening. But that's not true because this force is acting on the ball, but this force is acting on the foot. These forces act on different objects. And so the only way you could cancel something is if you had multiple forces acting like on the same object. But these forces are not like that. In action reaction pair, they don't act on the same object. They act always on two different objects. So if you're solving a physics problem and you're coming up with an action and a reaction force and you're trying to put them and act on the same body, you've immediately made a mistake because they never act on the same body, ever, 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 ever. So what I want to do next, I'm gonna write one more example under here and then we're gonna write Newton's third law down. Then we're gonna draw a bunch of different examples like this. The only way you can really get the feel for action and reaction is to see a bunch of examples. So here is a butterfly flapping its wings. And I already mentioned this one verbally, but let's just do it. Now again, I can't draw, you know this. So this is a wing of a butterfly and it looks like my marker's almost out of ink. Here's another wing of a butterfly. I'll try to clean this up. Use your imagination, that's a butterfly, okay? You have two little antenna like this, right? So you can tell I'm, I'm, I'm a terrible artist, that's okay. So what you have here is the butterfly doing its thing like this, right? <clears throat> okay, so what happens is you have a force acting down like this, which is gonna be the force of the wing on air. So when you push down, there is a force of you pushing the air down. What would the reaction force be? It would be an upward force, which would be F of the air acting on the wing. I really want you to think about this for a second. The wing is acting on the air, the air is acting on the wing. Notice that these forces can't cancel because they don't act on the same thing. This is a force on the air, and this is a force on the wing. Those forces are on acting on totally different objects. So what happens is when you push down, you're pushing and you, act, you, you impart a force on the air. That force moves the air down. But at the moment of that force happening, the force of the, there is a reaction force where the air is pushing up 
on your wing. And that is how you kind of maintain your little altitude. Without the reaction force, which actually is acting on your wing, then of course flapping wouldn't do anything. So you're simultaneously pushing the air down while the air is pushing your hand or your wings up. All right, so that is our second little example. Now what we wanna do is write down Newton's third law. So we can get it on the board before I lose you here. Newton's third law. I encourage you to watch till the end because there's a lot of little examples here I wanna get through. So here we go. To every action, and when I say action, it's really an action force. There is an equal uh, and opposite reaction force. You know, I'm not as smart as Isaac Newton. Uh, but if I wrote this myself, I would say to every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force that act on different objects or on the, on the partner object in the interaction. Because it makes it sound like there's always two forces and they just cancel, equal and opposite cancel. But that's not what's happening because the forces are acting on totally different things. All right, so uh, there. Now, the way you would mathematically write that is you would basically say some force uh, of object A acting on object B is gonna be equal to the negative of the force of object B acting on A. Now we get a little mathematical and a lot of people's brains start to blow up. What does this mean? This means the force of my foot acting on the ball is exactly the same thing as the force acting from the ball acting on my foot. But there's a negative sign here which just means that it's in the exact opposite direction of whatever the direction of this force was. That's exactly what I've codified here. This force would be like in the positive direction, this force would be in the negative direction. But what this doesn't say, because I'm trying to, to kind of like beat it into your head so you don't forget it, this equation doesn't, it, it sort of tells you down here, but it doesn't emphasize that, that they're acting on totally different objects. So it looks like people see, oh, they're equal and opposite, they cancel somehow, but they don't because A and B are different objects, foot and ball are different objects, wing and air are different objects and so on. And then the next thing I wanna write under here is a note, it's not really part of Newton's law, but it's just as important as everything we've written here. Uh, let's see, these action and reaction forces, uh, action and reaction forces never, now underline with a quadruple underline, never act on the same object. And I will follow that up with saying they never underline, 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 cancel. So yes, sometimes in physics forces cancel. Sure, happens a lot, uh, but never an action reaction pair ever, never does because they act on different objects. And we're gonna get to uh, some examples. I'm sure in your mind you're thinking, well, we've already done some examples where I think they cancel. Well, those were not action reaction pairs. I'll get into the details in just a minute. We'll show you some examples. So let's jump, we've already done two little examples right here. Uh, variety is the spice of life, let's do a little bit more. Let's talk about a bat and a ball. Right, a bat and a ball. So you're standing at the mound, you crack against the bat, against the ball, and what do you have? You have some bat, which is some elongated object, and you have some ball, which is some spherical object, and of course it's swinging kind of like this, this direction, and it crack, it hits the thing. So at the moment of, at the moment of impact, this ball experiences a force. I'll represent it right here. This is a force uh, of the bat on the ball. This force is what makes the ball go away from you. But at that exact moment, there is an equal and opposite force down here which is the ball acting on the bat. Now, if you hit it, if the ball and the mat, a bat are similar masses and, and similar construction of, of materials, and you hit it just right, you can actually see this force acting on the bat and kind of kick the back backward, backwards, okay? But in baseball, what usually happens is that you follow through with it and you're applying more force in your shoulder so that even though there's a reaction force on the bat, you're overpowering that reaction force with more muscle power in your shoulder. So you don't see the bat bounce back 
like this, and that's because you literally are following through with additional force from your shoulder, and so you don't see it, but it is there. And if you hit a ball, you can feel the resistance onto the bat at the moment that the bat hits the ball. But notice that these forces, one of them is acting on the ball, one of them is acting on the bat. And so because of that, I'm gonna write down here, uh, no, cancel. I wanna drill this in your head. These do not cancel, they're different, they're different bodies. These forces are acting on different bodies, no cancel. These forces, the wing acting on the air, the air acting on the wing, no cancel. You see, I'm just gonna beat that in your head over and over again because it's so important. You, you, you know, you'd be surprised how many times people write that down and they try to cancel it and it's just obviously not right. All right, let's talk about swimming. Whoops. And instead of swimming, if you'd rather, you can think about canoeing, if you, if you wanna think about canoeing. So in, you're in the water and you're swimming. How do you swim? You put your hand forward, you kind of slide it into the water and you pull backwards. And then that lunges you forward a little bit and then you do the whole thing again. So I can't draw swimming. I'm not even gonna pretend, right? So here's my little stick figure. I'm looking top down here, I'm in the water. And just to do a little blow up and show you what's going on, my hand is extended out into a <laughs> gigantic little hand right there. Or you can think of it as a little flipper on the end of my hand, okay? So what you have going on, all this is water surrounding me and you're looking top down on me like this. And what happens is I'm exerting a force from my hand, hand on water. And this force pushes the water backwards. You can see the swirlies in the water. That's what's going on right here. What's the reaction force? Well, then my, uh, the, uh, the force right here is the water on my hand. Now it looks like they would cancel right here, but I just can't draw it so cleanly. These do not cancel. Because even though I drew it right here as if it's like, uh, you know, really the better thing to do would be to kind of like separate it down here and then say that the force is really, because the force is really acting on the water in the microscopic layer right by my hand. That's where the force is. I'm acting on the water. And what does that do? That pushes the water back. If you're canoeing and you're doing that, then you're watching the water slide past you, but at the same time, you're watching the boat lunge forward because the water is pushing on you. The force acting on the boat is the force of the water there. But these are not canceling because one of them is acting on my hand and one of them is acting on the water. Two different things. All right, let's talk about a collision. Now, I don't wanna talk about collision of a car or anything like that. I'm just saying like two objects. Here's object uh, A here and here's object B right here. And what's going on is this one's traveling right here with some velocity, and this one's traveling here with some velocity. So obviously they're gonna, they're gonna uh, collide with each other. So uh, one or two seconds later, these things are going to interact with each other, and they're going to think about two billiard balls or pool, pool balls or soccer balls or whatever, and they hit each other. This is still object A, and this is still object B. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be some force, some forces going on right here. So this one is going this way, and this one's going this way. And so what happens is this ball experiences a force in this direction. And this is the ball A acting on the ball B. On ball B, because of ball A, it has a force acting this direction. And at exactly the same moment, this force is gonna be ball B acting on ball A, like this. And these forces are equal and opposite, but they don't cancel, no cancel because this force is acting on this ball and this force is acting on this ball. So what actually happens? They're gonna hit each other, boom, and rebound from each other. This force is responsible for making the ball fly this way and this force is responsible for making the ball fly this way. So these two forces that are happening due to the collision, they're responsible for then the rebounding that's, that's going on uh, in both directions when the balls fly apart. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.